Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tube Mixes Album Review uh, Tube Mixes Album Reviews. Um, now as you can tell I'm a little bit under the weather, got a slight cold. Uh, but I thought since Betty Boo uh, if Betty Boo can do a stream a long thing uh, with a little bit of a cold then so can I. And today is going to be well a special one. Well, of course, last night as you know well yeah so yesterday was Halloween. Um, and I had the video all to go generally, you know, I just have to, I just had to fill my links, but, uh, and, um, I felt ill, um, I felt ill, so, um, well, as you can tell, I'm still a little bit under the weather, but I think, you know what, let's give it a go, and it's going to be a special one, um, Maybe some of you have had to delay your Halloween celebrations anyway, so I thought it's the 1st of November, so not too long after. So yeah, let's go. It's going to be Andrew Gold's Halloween album, uh, fun uh, howls and uh, scary music, that's it. And uh, yeah, so you don't tend to think of Halloween albums, do you? So if you're ready, let's go. Oh, run the titles. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, surely this is not the same Andrew Gold who was in Wax in the 80s and in the 70s it hits, uh, including Thank You For Being A Friend, uh, Lonely Boy, and Never Let Us Slip Away. Well, it is. As, as hard as it to believe, it is the same Andrew Gold. I suppose by this point, 1996, this album came out. So you have to remember that, you know, I don't think he was expected to have any chart success again. And, well, I imagine he was already quite rich from the songs he wrote as well. Um, so, I suppose he wanted to just make it for his audience, the Andrew Gold fans, and also kids, really. And if you could afford to do that, then then why not? So, track one is It Must Be Halloween. It sort of reminds me of Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me from Toy Story, uh, which, well, 1995... Um, in the US and 96 in the UK um, so yeah maybe Andrew had, had seen Toy Story or um, I'm pretty sure he's worked with Randy Newman actually it came from the same uh, batch of singer songwriters in the 70s yes I know he was around in the late uh, 60s but uh, Randy Newman that is but um, yeah certainly part of that scene uh, yes it's fun uh, it's very simple, uh, which <laughs> is not surprising because it is a children's music album. And um, I can't tell if he's just putting on a Halloween like voice but or whether his voice has generally changed. To be honest, I don't really know much from Andrew Gold apart from the three songs in the 70s and Bridge to Your Heart with Wax, uh, which of course he formed with 10cc's Graham Gunman, so real supergroup. Uh, but yes, it's simple, fun and perfect for Halloween. If you're having a kid's Halloween party, then stick this on because it's absolutely perfect. Uh, right, would I revisit it? Uh, yes, yes, I think so. Right, shall we move on? Okay, so track two is the Monster Mash cover of the... <coughs> Excuse me. And the Bobby Boyce Picket and the Crypt Kickers uh, song, which was banned in 1962 by the BBC for being too morbid. I know, how crazy is that? Uh, but became a hit in the 70s and, uh, well, now, 
I, I don't think you can get away with it, can you, on Halloween? Um, and would you believe Linda Ronstadt is on backing vocals? Um, so, yeah, that's quite funny to think that she's doing backing vocals with Andrew Gold doing the Monster Mash. Um, and yes, he certainly, it certainly is a bit more centric than Bobby Boris Pickett's uh, original version. In a way, it makes sense for Andrew Gold to be sort of acting because his mother, in case you didn't know, was Marnie Nixon. Um, someone who was famous for dubbing other people in the um, golden age of the film's musicals. Uh, she dubbed for Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady, Deborah Kerr, I think, in The King and I, um, and so much more. Um, I didn't know that until recently, actually. But, uh, yeah, it's fun. And um, do I prefer it to the original? Uh, no, I think it's certainly fun. I like that he's put a bit more, um, gives it a more um, eccentric uh, spin on it. Uh, would I revisit it? Yes. Yes, I think I would. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the Monster Mash is a Halloween classic, isn't it? So, uh, right, let's move on. Track 3 is called Spooky Scary Skeletons. Now, I don't know about you, but I first discovered this. Um, well, it was a YouTube video, and someone had used it, um, edited it to um, an old Walt Disney cartoon, The Silly Symphonies he used to do. Um, and there's one with this, I think it's called The Skeleton Dance. Um, and yeah, that's how I discovered it. And. Um, and um, I remember, I remember someone looking it up because I, I felt, oh, oh right, I wonder where that that song is from, uh, you know, is it from some film or something? But uh, no, it was from Andrew Gold, and I couldn't believe it because uh, that certainly wasn't what I'd uh, have expected Andrew Gold to do. And also, so just back a bit, uh, Stephen Bishop, the singer-songwriter, actually joins him on the Monster Mash as well. Um, and also, I think you've got to remember that by the 90s, the Golden Girls was on. Um, now, I've never seen it, although I have heard of it, and I know Betty White was in it. Um, if you're a Golden Girls fan, you'll know that Andrew's song, Thank You For Being A Friend, was used as the theme song, if that for quite a lot of people they hear that and they'll think of the golden girls uh but back to this song yes it's uh it's almost it won't get out of your head uh it, it's almost hypnotic um which i suppose is appropriate for halloween and uh yeah a very very good song i think yeah perfect for halloween and if you're having a kid's halloween party then uh yeah it's perfect for it would I revisit it again? Uh, yes, I think I would. Right, let's move on. The next track is called Trick or Treat. Oh, by the way, you might notice a slight continuity error. Well, it is getting dark now, so I thought I'd put my light on. Um, so, yeah. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, this track is called Trick or Treat and it's sort of a cross between like a Halloween version of Jingle Bells and a country uh, sort of um, a country song. Um, and it, it'd be great to play at a Halloween party because um, it goes, well, it's a sort of steady rhythm and then it goes really fast. Um, so yeah, be a really popular one to play if you're doing um, Halloween parties, um, I think. And uh, it, it gets in your head. Um, I'm sure I have this in my head, which is always a good sign, as I always say. It's always good for a song to be memorable and you, you can't get it out of your head. Um, so yeah, uh, would I revisit it? Yes, I think I would. I think it's one of the best of the um, original songs. Um on the album so yeah really good right let's move on now you would think with andrew gold's pop background that if he was to do the adams family he'd be doing mc hammer's adams groove from the um 
the live action nineties remake of the Adams Family. Uh, wrong, no, he does Vic Mizzy's classic short and sweet uh, theme from the original series. Um, and yes, it's not very long, but that song it doesn't really need to be any longer than it does. Oh, and I forgot to mention this album does feature David Casty. Yes, that David Casty from the Partridge Family. Um, and of course a pop star in his own right so yes he's on this as well uh, yeah David Casty, Linda Ronstadt yes yeah, some uh, plus Victoria Gold which I presume must be Andrew's one of Andrew's daughters um, so yeah and they, they do seem to be having fun um, would I revisit it um, well yes it's it's pretty much the same as the Adams Family theme. Um, it is very short, so, uh, you know, if you're going to play it at a party, I think, um, well, well, I, I think it would still work, even though it's so short, and they'd be ready to move on to the next track anyway. Uh, right, let's move on. Okay, so the next track is Ghostbusters. Yeah, you guessed it. Ray Parker Jr.'s title song from the film of the same name. And um, they seem to have slowed it down a bit, which is a shame. Um, because if you want to dance to it at a party, yeah, they just they seem to have slightly, slightly taken the joy out of it. Um, I have to say I much prefer Ray Parker Jr.'s uh, original version. Um, and it's a bit annoying with all the american kids saying um ghostbusters um i just find that a little bit annoying personally uh, but that's just my view um but i think whether it's this or ray parker jr or whoever i think if you're going to put this on in a halloween party it's always going to go down a storm isn't it um you know people said who you go call them you know shouting ghostbusters and the the whole uh song it's just one of those big Halloween anthems isn't it that you often hear um, on the radio along with the, the monster mash and one of the songs that I think if you say to me goes what's one of the definitive Halloween songs well I would say yeah Ghostbusters is definitely up there um, a brilliant song and uh, yeah I, I love the original music video as well with all its cameos and uh, Ray Parker Jr just uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Right, would I revisit it? Uh, yes. Like I said, it's slightly taken away the joy. Only slightly, only slightly. So the next track is called Give Me a Smile, the Pumpkin Song. And for the first time on the album, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to... I don't think it's going to be that memorable. It's a jazzy sort of blues uh, featuring Greg Prosperino. Um, sorry, just, uh, excuse me, just going to have a uh, look. Uh, Greg Prestopino, right. Um, yeah, not the easiest of names to say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think if you're going to play this at the party as if, you were going to play the the whole uh, album. I'm not sure. I don't think... I think everyone would be just a bit bored and not know what to do. I'm not a particular fan of the track myself. I don't think it's going to be one that I'm going to be uh, coming back to. Um, and I don't think it's it would particularly stay in my head, really. But not all tracks are like that. Um... So, yeah, would I revisit it? No, probably not. I think it's one of the <laughs> the first weaker track on the album, I think. Of course, if you like blues and jazz, then I suppose you'll, you'll like it. But, yeah, not really my cup of tea. Right, let's move on. The next track is called Don't Scream, It's Only Halloween. And it reminds me of Donovan's Sunshine Superman and Elvis Presley's It's Now or Never uh, a little bit. Um, as well as a tiny touch of Bobby Darwin's Dream Lover as well. I really like it. Um, I think it's so 
fun. Um, again, I think a very good original song because when you've got Ghostbusters and the Monster Mash, which everybody knows, and then there's original songs, then there is quite a lot of pressure, I'd imagine. But actually, that's a really good original song, and again, one that will keep in your in your head. Um, has a really 60s psychedelic pop rock sound as well. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I'd definitely be visiting it. And I think, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, if, you, if you're playing the whole album, um, or play the selected songs of the album uh, for your uh, Halloween party or whatever, then yeah, I think it's definitely one to uh, one to go to, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I'll definitely be visiting it again. Right, let's move on. The next track is called "The Creature from the Tomb," and it sort of it makes me think of like a game. If you've ever played, uh, what time is it, Mister Wolf, with your uh, kids, or have ever heard of that game? It's um, sort of I can imagine people just sort of sneaking, really, or pretending to be a creature in I don't know a bathtub made of cardboard. Um, so yeah, um, it's not particularly great as a song but I think as a as a poem or uh, as a game I think it would work um the water noises might make you want to go and have a pee though <laughs> because they're pretty much constant through the show um show that song even um so yeah would I revisit it no I think it's one of the weaker tracks on the album uh, of the original songs um and it's not particularly memorable. Um, it's not great as a song, but it would really work well if you're looking for some kind of game um, in your Halloween party. Um, so, yeah. Uh, right, let's move on. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, vocalist Nick Nicorette Larson uh, is the voice of the mum. And but it would be um, tragic because she would pass away just a year after this album. So this album was released in '96. She passed away in '97. Um, oh, but also, sorry, another thing. I did like the callback to uh, Mash is ready. Uh, whether that was just due to Monster Mash, which of course we've already heard already. Um, so I did like that. So um, yeah, but uh, not. A track I'd be rushing to, to put on. So I mentioned that David Cassidy was on the album and he features on this track, Halloween Party, which funnily enough reminds me of uh, Never Let Us Slip Away, um, which of course was a hit for Andrew in the 70s and as I said, one of his big uh, hits. So it really reminds me of that and a good sort of slow, gentle country rock song. I really like it. It's very catchy. I think it would uh, stay stuck in your head and I think it's memorable. And yeah, not all the original songs, well, as you will find, um, are, are great. But this one is. Um, so would I revisit it? Uh, yes. So the penultimate track is Witches, 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 um, which is good. Um, and, uh, you know, the call, uh, the call out of um, Witches, Witches, Witches on a Broom. Um, it is quite catchy. Um, the only thing that's slightly annoying is that the kids on it. Um, but uh, no, no, it is a good, it is a good original song and would really go down well um, at a party. Um <laughs> If you play bingo right now, and you, <laughs> you could probably tick off party so many times, I've said it. Um, but yeah, the kids calling out, um, you know, witches, witches, witches on a broom, I think would go down very well. And yeah, it is a generally very good song. Um, was I, sorry, would I revisit it again? Yes, I think. <laughs> So our final track is called In Our Hot <coughs> 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 
it's not called that. It's called In Our Haunted House, um, which sounds like, well, at first it sounds like a creepy version of um, Chim Chim Chirimi. Chim Chim Chirimi. Um, yeah, always difficult, that one from Mary Poppins. Um, and then it goes into a slightly different direction and then it reverts. It's a very interesting track. Um, you could imagine being in a some sort of theme park ride, couldn't you? Um, or song from a film, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's particularly great. Although, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Although I will say the fact that it goes into different directions um, that doesn't say the same is fantastic. Uh, would I revisit it again? No, probably not. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty good album. Uh, not all the original tracks are great, but there are a few that are good and it's covers of Ghostbusters and the Monster Mash. It's good as well. Um, so, yeah. Right, well, that's it. Um, yes, I know I've been slightly under the weather, but uh, I didn't want to wait till next Halloween, um, a whole year away to do this, because I, I got everything ready. And I thought, OK, I may not be 100%, but you know what? Let's just give it a go. And I think for the most part, it's gone pretty well. There's been the old cough, um, but uh, no, I hope you've enjoyed it, and um, if you've delayed your Halloween celebrations or, um, you know, for whatever reason, and, um, you know, you're going to do trick or treat or have a party or go to a Halloween party, then I think this is the perfect album to get you in the mood. I'll just leave you with... Um, uh, some words that Andrew Gold said in the liner notes. Um, so he said, uh, right, so he said, uh, each holiday has a mood and uses music to go with it. However, it's been very hard to find any tapes of CD or CDs of, Hall <laughs> of Halloween music. Um, in fact, there's mostly just scary sound effects available, very few songs, so I fixed that. And I think he he has done a really good job, and I don't know why, you know, okay, Christmas is obviously a, a massive thing, uh, but Halloween is still quite big as well, and I don't know why many people haven't done Halloween albums, because, uh, you know, you often hear Ghostbusters and the Monster Mash, but, uh, but, yeah, I suppose that makes him sort of unique, doing something that maybe no other artist would. So I praise you for that, Andrew, and um, thank you. Right, if you want to, like, share, comment, and subscribe to the TubeMix YouTube channel. And I'll see you um, next time. Bye-bye.